Hey, so welcome back. And this is another daily code problem. So today's called coin change. And it's a medium level uh, dynamic programming problem. And so essentially you're just given a uh, array list here uh, with a set of coins. So it's kind of like change. So this is, would be like $1, $2, and maybe $5. Um, and then you're also given like an amount here. So this is an amount of $11. And essentially you want to be able to create that amount using these particular coins of the sets of values. And so if you wanna make 11, well, you can do that by say uh, $5 plus $5 plus $1. And that's how you can kind of make 11 there. Now you might be able to see how you can make it uh, a couple different ways, but essentially you just want to use the fewest number of coins possible. And so kind of like the greedy way of doing this would be looking at this in a, a sorted and reverse order so in this case, you're kind of looking at it from right to left. And you just say, okay, if I have a $5 bill and then another $5 bill, I can make 10. And well, I can't use another five to make 11 and I can't use two to make 11. So why don't I use one? And that, that kind of only goes so far though, because there are cases where um, you should go down different paths where maybe you want to use a two at this step. Um, but regardless, um, what this would look like is essentially if we want to draw the recursive relationship, that would be something like, okay, say if we have that $11, there's kind of three possible paths that we can go down. We can either use five, use two, or we can use one, at least for the example that was just given to us. And so what this would look like is then 11 becomes six, or if we use two, it becomes nine, or one, it becomes 10. And then you're basically still building out this decision tree uh, for these different paths. So then if we use five again, this would be one. If we use two, this would be four, this would be one, um, then we would have five left. And then finally, in this case, well, if you only have one, you can only use uh, the one coin here, and that would be lead zero. So this is kind of how you can find the least number of coins that you need, which is three in this case. Okay, so I think that's enough explanation. Why don't we go ahead and implement this? So I'll do the top-down minimization approach. Um, you can go ahead and look in the comments if you want to do the bottom-up um, kind of what our iterative way of doing it. But I think for now, um, this is good for me and for what I'm practicing. So let's go ahead and do that. So typically the pattern is, is you want to make a DP array or a DP a recursive function here and we're going to return uh, the result of this and so let's go ahead and pass in the amount that we're currently at and I'll just specify this as n within our function here and so we want to declare our base case and so that's going to be okay if n is 0 then let's just go ahead and return 0 and that's because well once you hit that kind of base case you just want to propagate the result up you don't get any extra points. It doesn't actually, you're not using an extra coin to get to zero. And so you just return zero and it's going to propagate the answer that we're returning. Now to do that, we're just going to want to iterate through all of these coins in this array that's given to us. And so in our case, we're going to iterate through five, two, and I think one. And so we just say, okay, for each of these coins, let's iterate through them. And we're expecting to return some result. Now, one thing that we want to do beforehand is let's go ahead and initially set a result to basically infinity. And so this just means, okay, what if we have, say, the we're trying to create an amount of, say, five, but then the coins that's given to us are all like greater than five. And so let's say it's like six, seven, 1,000, whatever, et cetera. Um, clearly, we're not able to actually make this amount. And so we want to show that we can. And so initially we're just going to take the infinite and we're going to say, okay, if we get infinite, that means we weren't actually able to create the result. And so in that case, let's just return negative one. Okay, so we just say if um, we'll return the result here at the end and let's set the result equal to this function call. But we only want to return this result if the result is not equal to infinity. Otherwise, let's go ahead and return negative one like the description told us. 
All right, and so the only other thing that we want to do here is that, okay, the reason why we're using math infinity and not negative one is we're going to want to be taking the minimum. And so because the result, if we set it initially to negative one, naturally you're not going to get a result that's smaller than that. So we just want to start with the biggest number possible. And so from here, we're just going to say, okay, the result is going to be equal to the minimum of itself and a new function call of the current value minus the value of the coin. And so say if the current value is like five, and then when we make this function call and the coin that we're using is say three, then we just do five minus three because we just used that coin and we're now looking to only create a value of two since five minus three is two. And now we need to use a coin that can create two. All right, but naturally, because we're subtracting this, we need to add one because we need to indicate somehow that we've used a coin. And so this answer, once we hit the base case, is going to kind of propagate all these additions of one up the chain until you reach uh, this final return result here. Now, one catch here is that we're not going to want to use a coin if it's greater than the current amount because you can't make $5, let's say, out of a thousand dollar coin. So we just want to make sure that the coin is less than or equal to the current amount. And if so, then we're going to actually consider using it. So let's go ahead and run this. Now this is going to work for these cases, but we're going to want to use actually memoization, which is basically um, uh, non-technical terms is more of a, you use like a, a bit of storage to have a lookup table. So you can quickly check the pre-computed work that you might have already done um, if you've already evaluated that result because there can be a lot of repeated work here. So to do that, all you have to do for uh, how I built out this method is just add a cache and that basically uses uh, the parameters here as the key and whatever it returns with this parameter is kind of the value that's stored in this kind of uh, hash map that we're basically making using this uh, annotation here. So let's go ahead and submit that. And success. So yeah, I hope this helped and um, good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thanks for watching.